Hello, and welcome back to the Wolf's Den. We are the Order of the Green Hand, here to bring some clarity to A Song of Ice and Fire. As promised in our Jon Snow, King of the North video, we are setting out to prove that not only is Jon Ned's firstborn son, but the true King of the North. But how could a bastard be the true King of the North? Well, he couldn't. But there are a few very interesting passages in the books that allude to the fact that John is actually Ned's only true-born child, making all of Catelyn's children little snows. I know a lot of you are probably thinking that we're totally crazy saying this, but bear with us for just a little bit longer and you'll come to realize this isn't nearly as crazy as it sounds. If you've watched any of our previous videos, you are probably aware of the fact that we believe Ned was in love with Ashara Dane and had a relationship with her following the tourney at Harrenhal. In the weeks and months leading up to Robert's Rebellion, it is likely that many of the High Lords and Ladies of Westeros were on their way to River Run for the long-awaited wedding of Catelyn Tully to Brandon Stark. We know that Lord Rickard Stark, Ned's father, and his company were en route to River Run from the north. We don't think Ned was traveling with his father, given the fact that when all hell broke loose, Ned took a perilous journey through the Mountains of the Moon to get north to call the banners. If he was with his father, he would not have taken this route. Since he is known to have spent a considerable amount of time in the Vale after being fostered there by John Aaron, we assume he was en route to the wedding from the Vale. We believe it's very likely that he would have asked Ashara to accompany him to his brother's wedding, so he could present her to his father and ask for his blessing to marry her. I'm not going to get into the details here, but if you want to see the evidence supporting this, check out our Jon Snow, King of the North, Jon Snow, Ned's Firstborn Son, and Jon Snow, The White Wolf videos. Now, if Ned did continue a relationship with Ashara, and it progressed to the point of intimate relations, what would he do? Well, we believe he'd marry her, and so does Tywin Lannister. I'm not sure if any of you noticed this, but after reading the books a second time, we noticed that Rob Stark's marriage to Jane Westerling was completely engineered by Tywin Lannister as a means of driving a wedge in Rob's army by scorning the incredibly prickly Walder Frey. When Tyrion figures it out, he asks Tywin about it, and Tywin responded, quote, Rob Stark is his father's son. But what does he mean by that? To us, the only reasonable explanation for this statement is that if Ned Stark slept with a highborn maid, he would marry her, placing her honor above his own, which coincidentally is exactly what Rob did. Which brings us back to Ned. When Ned is traveling south with Robert to take his place as Hand of the King, Ned and Robert have a conversation about John's mother, and Ned says something in this conversation that totally blew our minds when we read it a second time. You were never the boy you were. More's the pity. And yet there was that one time. What was her name, that common girl of yours? Becca? No, she was one of mine. God's lover, black hair and these sweet big eyes you could drown in them. Yours was Elena? No. You told me once, was it Meryl? You know the one I mean, your bastard's mother. Her name was Wyla, and I'd sooner not speak of her. Wyla, yes. She must have been a rare wench if she could make Lord Eddard Stark forget his honor. Even for an hour. You never told me what she looked like. Nor will I. Leave it be, Robert, for the love you say you bear me. I dishonoured myself, and I dishonoured Catelyn, in the sight of gods and men. Did you catch it? I totally understand if you didn't, because it took us reading it like four times in a row to totally work this one out. He said he dishonoured himself and Catelyn in the sight of gods and men. What do people do in the sight of gods and men? They swear vows, which in this case were marriage vows. This implies that it was the marriage itself that dishonored them both. But how could a marriage be dishonorable? Well, if Ned was already married, 
I'd say that getting married again is pretty darn dishonorable. I know that a lot of you are probably thinking that we are way off here, and he's referring to either cheating on Catalan or lying about cheating on Catalan to maintain his previous lie of being John's father, or whatever. But if that's your position, why did he get mad? His mouth tightened in anger before he spoke. Not nerves from having to lie. Could it be that Robert calling the love of his life a rare wench made him just a little angry? To find the truth of the matter, we need to go back to the start of Robert's Rebellion and Ned's route north to call the banners. Like we have stated in our previous videos, the stories that circulate around the realm are often rooted in truth, but the details get scrambled in the passing of the story. At the start of Robert's Rebellion, Ned was said to have traveled through the Mountains of the Moon, where he then enlisted a local fisherman to bring him across the Bight to White Harbor. However, Ned ended up washing ashore at Sweet Sister with a girl he claimed was the fisherman's daughter. Now the locals believe that Ned fathered John on this supposed fisherman's daughter, which means they must have seen something between Ned and this girl that led them to this conclusion. We believe that the people of Sweet Sister are correct and that the woman Ned washed ashore with is in fact John's mother, with one caveat. She's not the fisherman's daughter, She's a Shara Dane. After a short conversation with Lord Borel, Ned departs from Sweet Sister and goes to White Harbor. We believe that when he arrived at White Harbor, he had a Shara Dane with him. So here Ned is, with the love of his life, and he's about to head off to war. The people of Sisterton clearly think Ned was intimate with the girl he was traveling with, who we believe was a Shara Dane. And given their near brush with death, What's better than the comfort of a woman's arms? And Ned, being the honorable man he is, couldn't take the love of his life to bed and head off to war, full well knowing he might never return, without marrying her first. Since both Ned's father and older brother are deceased at this point in the story, Ned is now the Lord of Winterfell, and therefore wouldn't need anyone's consent to marry Ashara if that is what he thought was right and what he wanted to do. So, having said that, we believe that while at White Harbor, Ned married Ashara before that great big weirwood tree in the Wolf's Den, or in the huge sept known to be in White Harbor. This parallels what happens to Rob Stark during the War of the Five Kings. At the point when Rob hooked up with Jane Westerling, he was wounded and just found out that his brothers were killed by Theon Greyjoy. So both Ned and Rob survive a near-death experience, find solace in the arms of a beautiful woman, and then marry this girl, whether it's for honor or for love or maybe even both, we cannot say. But as Tywin Lannister so eloquently put it, Rob Stark is his father's son. Okay, so Ned marries Ashara Dane, then heads north to Winterfell, calls the banners and marches south to join his forces to that of John Aaron's, who are coming from the Vale. It is likely that they would meet up at the crossroads because that is where the King's Road intersects with the High Road, and they can also cross the Trident there. Then they can head down the River Road down towards River Run in the hopes of getting Hoster Tully to enlist the Riverlands to their cause. This is imperative because without the Riverlands they are hopelessly outnumbered. Meanwhile, Robert wins three battles in a single day at Summerhall and heads west, where his forces and those of the Reach face off at Ashford. The Tyrells, led by Randall Tarley, are victorious and Robert is wounded. Robert then turns north so he can join his forces to those of Ned and John Aaron, but John Connington, Eris's current hand, is hot on his heels. Due to his wounds, Robert is forced to stop at the Stony Sept to rest. Connington catches up with Robert and begins to search every inch of the town for Robert. So, by the time Ned and John Aaron get to River Run, Robert is in great peril and trapped at the Stony Sept. This adds further urgency to an already urgent situation. Hoster Tully, being the shrewd lord he had a reputation for being, knew that he had the upper hand in the negotiations 
and that for the rebels, time was of the essence. Honestly, one cannot wholly blame Hoster for capitalizing on the opportunity to unite his family with that of the North and the Vale, as backing the rebels would require him to risk everything, and as the saying goes, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. So, in exchange for Tully aid, Ned agrees to marry Catelyn, in his brother's stead, and John Aaron agrees to marry Lysa. But that's not the most intriguing part of the story. The George R. R. Martin endorsed a World of Ice and Fire app references that a negotiation took place that resulted in Ned agreeing to marry Catelyn. This implies that Ned wasn't as agreeable to these terms as one would expect. In fact, Catelyn thinks that Ned married her in his brother's stead as, quote, custom decreed which indicates that this is not something that would normally require a negotiation. So why was Ned resisting doing the honorable thing, as custom decreed, and marrying Catelyn in his brother's stead? Well, if he was already happily married, that might make him a tad bit reluctant to agree to these terms. So let's look at the predicament Ned finds himself in at this very point. He had two choices. One, Agree to marry Catelyn, save their cause, and the lives of nearly everyone he knows, including his own, should they be victorious. Or two, not marry Catelyn, and in doing so, very likely seal the fate of the North, John Aaron, Robert, and everyone he cares about. What would you do? More importantly, what would Ned do? In a Game of Thrones, John ate. Maester Eamon asks John that very question. Tell me, John, if the day should ever come when your lord father must needs choose between honor on the one hand and those he loves on the other, what would he do? John hesitated. He wanted to say that Lord Eddard would never dishonor himself, not even for love. Yet inside, a small, sly voice whispered, he fathered a bastard. Where was the honor in that? And your mother, what of his duty to her? He will not even say her name. He would do whatever was right, he said, ringingly, to make up for his hesitation. No matter what. And that is what Ned Stark did. He did what was right, no matter what. He married Catelyn in his brother's stead, won the Riverlands to their cause, and in doing so, saved the lives of Robert Baratheon, the man he called brother, and John Aaron, the man he considered a second father, and the lives of countless others, all at grievous cost to himself. Now, I bet you're wondering if we think that Hoster Tully was aware of Ned's marriage to Ashara during these negotiations. Well, we do because we believe that Ned would have told him the truth, because it would be the right thing to do. However, Hoster Tully clearly would not be moved, and possibly either ask Ned to have his marriage annulled, or, if it was done in front of a heart tree and not in a sept, he might not have even felt the need to, because to someone raised in the light of the seven, a marriage in front of a weirwood tree isn't even a real marriage. Now, the reason that we believe that Hoster was aware of the situation is because of a passage in A Game of Thrones, Catelyn VI. Catelyn was thinking about the hot and cold relationship between her father and her uncle Brynden, and how they always managed to reconcile their differences when she was younger, and how that all changed the day that Catelyn and Liza wed Ned and John Aaron. The war had not ended until the day she and Liza had been wed. It was at their wedding feast that Brynden told his brother he was leaving River Run to serve Liza and her new husband, the Lord of the Erie. Lord Hoster had not spoken his brother's name since, from what Edmure told her in his infrequent letters. It is our belief that Brynden Tully, otherwise known as Blackfish, was present for the negotiations between Hoster Tully, Ned Stark, and John Aaron, and that he was so disgusted by what his brother did that the two brothers fought once more. But this time, there would be no reconciliation. We believe the Blackfish was so appalled by what his brother was knowingly forcing Ned Stark to do, 
that when it actually happened, he could stomach it no more. And he publicly announced his intent to leave the service of his own family at the feast celebrating the marriages. The realization that Ned was in fact already married when he wed Catalan is what finally shed some light on a conversation Ned has with Cersei in A Game of Thrones at R12. Your brother or your lover? Both. Since we were children together. And why not? The Targaryens wed brother to sister for 300 years to keep the bloodlines pure. And Jamie and I are more than brother and sister. We are one person in two bodies. We shared a womb together. He came into this world holding my foot, our old maester said. When he is in me, I feel whole. My son Bran. He saw us. You love your children, do you not? With all my heart. No less do I love mine. And then Ned thinks, if it came to that, the life of a child I did not know, against Rob and Sansa and Arya and Bran and Rickon, what would I do? Even more so, what would Catelyn do, if it were John's life against the children of her own body? He did not know. He prayed he never would. All right. I know a lot of the R plus L equals J supporters out there like to use that last passage as proof of John not being Ned's. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but this seems to be Ned placing himself in Cersei's position where he makes a straight apples to apples comparison between his quote unquote thought to be true born children and what he would do to protect the secret that would ruin their lives and what Cersei was willing to do to protect her children. He then asks himself what Catelyn would do if she was to discover that John is a threat to her children. I mean, he really tries not to think about it, but deep down, he knows what she would do. So to summarize, we believe that from the very start of Robert's Rebellion, Ned did what was right, no matter what, just like John said. When word reached Ned and Ashara of Lyanna's disappearance, the two of them likely headed back towards the Eyrie. Then, word of his father and brother's deaths reached them, and they turned north, traveled through the Mountains of the Moon, and washed ashore at Sisterton, where the near-death experience drew them even closer, likely resulting in John's conception. Ned then did the honorable thing, just like Rob, and married Ashara at White Harbor. Ned then goes to Winterfell, calls the Banners, joins forces with John Aarons, and heads to Riverrun to try to enlist Hoster Tully to offer the aid of the Riverlands. Negotiations are said to have taken place, which resulted in terms requiring Ned to marry Catelyn and John to marry Liza. Negotiations which we believe were hastily agreed to, given the perilous situation Robert was in at the Stony Sept. Ned concedes to Hoster's wishes, and upon returning from Stony Sept, marries Catelyn in his brother's stead, and in that very moment dishonored himself and Catelyn in the sight of gods and men, just like he told Robert. We believe that this was the final nail in the coffin for Brynden Blackfish Tully, whose relationship with his brother was already strained. Interestingly, their differences are largely attributed to Hoster's insistence that Brynden marry and Brynden's adamant refusal to do so. But the two always manage to work things out. After all, they are brothers. But something happened the day that Catelyn married Ned and Liza married John Aaron that changed everything. Something the Blackfish found so egregious that he publicly announced at the wedding feast that he would be leaving River Run and the service of House Tully. Lastly, when Ned confronts Cersei about what happened to Bran, she full well admits that he saw them, and then she asks him if he loves his children. This implies that Bran was a threat to her children's lives and their inheritance. Ned then asks himself what he would do in her situation, if it were the life of a child he did not know against the lives of his own illegitimate children. He then thinks, and even worse, what would Catelyn do? if it were John's life against the children of her body. 
To us, this is where Ned subtly draws a parallel between Circe and Catalan. In his mind, he sees them as two women in strikingly similar circumstances. Both of them have children that, to the outside world, are all thought to be legitimate. However, one distinction between them is that Circe knows her children are truly bastards, whereas Catalan, in Ned's mind, is completely ignorant to this fact. Ned is not sure what Catalan would do to John should she ever find out the truth, and he prays he never will. Coming up, more mysteries, more myths, more motives, including what we think happened to the Three Kingsguard from the Tower of Joy, more on the Blood Raven Varus connection, our theories on the Children of the Forest, and why we believe that Catalan Tully is the absolute worst person that's ever lived. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe for more clarity on A Song of Ice and Fire, brought to you by the Order of the Green Hand.